Hello, my name is Morten and this is my journey into photographing the stars and deep sky objects. Today it's the night after imaging and you might have seen my video on imaging the Western Veil Nebula. I have my scope in my garage and you will have to excuse the mess. So uh, I'm going to take calibration frames and flat frames. One of the most important things to consider when taking flat frames is that you need to have the exact same camera rotation and you also need to have the exact same focus position as you had when taking your light frames. If you don't have this, you can shift position of the dust specks and other particles inside your optical train. I'm going to rotate my scope and set it to a vertical position and I'm going to place my LED panel on top of my telescope and then I'm going to show you how to take the flat frames in astrophotography tool. So for taking my flats I want to rotate my mount like so and I want to set it to a vertical position like that and then I'm going to place my LED panel on top of my scope and then take the flats from my PC. So this is actually my flat panel it's a homemade, it's not pretty, I know, but it is the, a very cheap LED panel. Uh, unfortunately, it's not dimmable, so I had to reduce the strength of the light by placing a couple of sheets of high-graded photographic printer paper on it. On top of that, I'm using some white fabric and that together will get a fairly reasonable histogram for my flat frames. I'm removing the cap and I'm placing my LED panel on top like this. And then it's just a matter of connecting this to a power source. As you can see now, the power is connected and you don't actually see that much light shining through but it is enough light to get a, a good histogram and a, a good flat frame. Now we're going inside to take our flat frames in astrophotography tool. So I'm inside right now and I've connected to my mini PC I have configured my Canon camera to the AV mode that will uh, let the camera decide the exposure time. The next thing I want to do in here is to click on the plans and choose a fret flame plan. Click on edit. Uh, I want to use the same ISO setting 1600. I uh, want to use a pause of five seconds between each exposure. I've noticed that there can be some issues with the Canon camera if I don't do that. Uh, I then want to take uh, 30 flat frames. Update current, click OK. And then I click the start button. You can see the flat frames coming in. They seem very gray at the moment, but that is completely normal. What you can do is that you can check the histogram 
to do that, we click on tools and we click on histograms. And you can see here that we are uh, about in the middle of the histogram. If you ask an expert, and uh, like I've said in other videos, I'm definitely not an expert on astrophotography, but uh, uh, it's been said that you uh, want to keep this histogram from about uh, one third to two thirds on the histogram. So I would say putting it in the middle of the histogram is a good place to start for you. For my LED panel with the fabric and the printer paper, I end up with uh, an exposure time of one sixtieth of a second. I haven't had any issues at all with these flats that I've been taken uh, this way. As I mentioned uh, earlier, it's very important to keep the camera rotation and the focus position exactly the same as when you were taking your light frames. So you don't want any dust or other particles moving around between the light frames and the flat frames. The best is, of course, to take your LED panel outside exactly right before or after you uh, image and take your flat frames. But since last night for me it was uh, minus 20 degrees Celsius and it was after 1 o'clock a.m. I was pretty eager to get uh, into bed. So if I want to browse my files I just go to the folder where I have uh, instructed my acquisition software to store uh, my data. And uh, one good thing about astrophotography tool and I guess other popular software as well is that it has a naming convention that you can control. So here you see F for flat, uh, a number, the ISO setting, the exposure time, and the temperature of the sensor at the time of exposure. And just for flat frames, the temperature is not so important. The flat frames are going to be used later on when stacking, together with other calibration frames, such as bias frames and dark frames. And the dark frames I took uh, last night, because those need to be at the same temperature as the light frames. So here you can see the temperature sensor after stabilizing was about minus 5 degrees and the ambient temperature outside at the time of taking these was about minus 18 degrees Celsius. So uh, the naming convention of these are D for dark, uh, a number, the ISO setting, the exposure time and the exposure time for darks need to be exactly the same as your light frames. Thank you for watching this video. If you like this content and want to see more of it, please consider subscribing to this channel and click the button to get a notification on when new content is published. If you want to see something else, please leave a comment in this video and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Until the next video, I wish you all clear skies.